seeing my children grow, you know. Um, I've got children all the way from um, about to turn 17 all the way to three years old. Mm-hmm. And to see them do things and like, you know what, they do that better than I did at their age. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's that's the joy, you know. So I think that's more so what it is to certain age is seeing somebody do it better. You yes. know, not, not just even do it better than what they did, which is great. Mm-hmm. But when I see that they're doing it better than me, that means, okay, when I'm gone, when mm-hmm. it's gone from the area, gone from this life, it means that, okay, they're going to take this to the next level, which is supposed to be because one thing I've learned, you can't call yourself a, su- a, f- a success mm-hmm. if you don't have a successor. Awesome. A lot of people talk about their success. Mm-hmm. I'm successful because I got this and I got that. I make all this money. Look at all this. Look at the blank. I mean, who's coming behind you? Correct. You know, like, I love it. And I, I, I know some people, don't, y'all didn't call people out. I know, I'm making this very play, play clear. They ain't say this. I'm saying this. But, you know, I love me some Joe Lowson. I love me some Tina Jakes. I love me some Fred Price. I love this, that. But just like, I'm always looking for who's coming next. Mm-hmm. And I, they might have said it, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, so for me, I can't call what you a success. It's like this Mark M- MLK, great man of God. You know, I might not even 100% agree on everything that's there, you know, which we don't have to get into because mm-hmm. I'm not, even though I believe in Christ, I'm not the one that says, hey, if you putting your hands on my children, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to probably put my hands on you. Mm-hmm. So I'm right, a little right. more Malcolm in that instance. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, he, he died for the cause. Mm-hmm. And that's awesome. But also one thing that hurts me is, like, his son didn't pick up the mantle. You know, right. like, his yeah. daughters didn't pick up the mantle. His wife was a face on the on the set. She was a great woman. Yeah, she was. But it's like, who was next? You know, mm-hmm. like, we still haven't had that Malcolm died. He, awesome man. Like, I, I believe if you look at his life, I think he would have actually at some point, if not came all the way back, he would eventually came somewhat back to the church. Absolutely. Because you look at where he started, he started mm-hmm. in the church. He did. His father was a pastor and a Garvey guy. And then he left that, but he came to the Black Muslim movement based on his father's, you know, being a Garvey. You know, mm-hmm. like that was that was more so that was what led him to the Black Muslim movement. So, you know, so I believe it would have came, but even still with that, it's like who came behind him? He started yeah. a whole nother thing. He had things that were being addressed. And, you know, he had five five daughters, is it I believe? Three three to five. I think it's okay. five. Five daughters. But we never saw Malcolm's vision grow. Same thing with Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey did all the great things and it was blessing people. But then we even though he was sabotaged from within, we never mm-hmm. saw it grow. We see little spurts here and there, but where is the person? So once again, you can't call yourself a success if you don't have a successor. And that's what I think we need to start building to. Yes. Um, that's a joke. That's what I'm saying. If I see you doing it better than me, we can talk about Christ, we can talk about the stuff, we can that's all great and good, but if you're gonna be a success, successful pastor, full yeah. of success, successful pastor, who's coming behind you? That's gonna take what you did and greater things when you do. Absolutely. If they're not gonna do greater things, mm-hmm. absolutely, <laughs> what it is. Mentorship is very, very important. Miss Onika. Yes. Awesome. Um, so, in continuation with the question about your ministry, the journey, your ministry, uh, I happened to watch the video on YouTube. And you would have a discussion on nakedness. You mentioned uh, about in the Bible that it was uh, considered having for a son to see their father's nakedness. Oh, yes. And then you look it down to spiritual nakedness and um, emotional nakedness between the husband and the wife. Mm-hmm. So, What's the difference between um, a husband, the nakedness between a husband and a wife, and the difference between a woman and a wife? I'm sorry, a man and a wife. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good I'm going to get on this one. I loved it. Okay. So please expound on the difference <laughs> between a woman and a wife. Well, okay, so once again, it's, in this culture, right, that's why I said a lot of, for example, a lot of people never read the Bible. When people say, I read the Bible, this and that, whatever, I'm like, so you know, so you know Hebrew? You know Hebrew? Because you know they were North African. Correct. Right? We mm-hmm. have like, well, we're from a certain place, right? Mm-hmm. So when you say Jabba Fisuda or the, the, the lower kingdom, northern kingdom, you had to come from their perspective. Correct. Right? Mm-hmm. So with them, everybody talking about Africa. Now the new thing is we need to have all these different wines and stuff. That was for kingdom building. If you were way kings, and even with that, it was still considered to be perverted. But they were like, well, mm-hmm. at least you're getting power, right? Mm-hmm. So that's talking about that all the time. But when you talk about a husband and 